Hello, welcome to the Gainsborough studio, home of Felix Stowe TV, and uh, not a bad day today, is it, Eric? It's Young Eric lovely. is here yet again. We're on episode 31? No, 30. Oh, 30. 30. 30. Yeah, you're sure of which that. Which is a lot. For yeah. like half an hour of time, <laughs> that's 15, 15 hours of hours. talking, so I it's mean, not it, bad. It, it makes the, uh, the interviews of Nixon <laughs> after his great fall from grace quite short. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, no question about it. Anyway, <laughs> we left it, I believe, last week that um, you'd uh, started to get involved or you acquired a property for a daughter in Ipswich and then I understand another property adjacent to it became available. So your wife was looking really to find somewhere that was more of a family family home. Well, that's family right. So, so, so you started to look about the probability of moving. So then what happened? So then we, <laughs> I, I seem to have a knack of finding empty properties which are semi-derelict. And lots I of spend work. my life <laughs> doing them up. But anyway, I've, I've done, I've counted all over the country. Right. I must have restored about 19 houses. Well, good man. So it's not bad. No, I've got a wee brilliant. little bit of experience. And yeah. now in my 90th year, yeah. I'm, I'm just about to do another property. No, you're in your 89th year. No, I'm in my 90th year. Oh, OK. I'm right. sorry. We're not going to have a fight over no, this. No, no, no. I'm accurate, I promise you on that. <laughs> and I tell everybody I'm 90. But yeah, I'm, 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 in my, I'm in my 90th year. Ish, which is yeah. slightly. Okay. See, in your first year, you're born. Yes. And you're in your first year until you have your first birthday. Absolutely. Yeah, you're so heading I'm that in, way. I've had yeah. my 89th birthday, so I'm in my 90th year. Yes. So, so okay, we'll accept that. <laughs> He's accepting that. That's right. good. People are normally looking to be younger rather than older. Oh, they I, I think no, as, you get, as you get older, you like to, yeah, to yeah. tell people. Well, you're wearing pretty well, Sam. I mean, well, uh, obviously Malta is still recovering from your visitation to it this last week or so. Oh, yes. I've just had a week in Malta now. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Glor a glorious place. They had the carnival, because as you know, yes. we're in Lent now. It's just started. And they've been having a carnival in Malta for 500 years now. Yeah. And believe it or not, they spend the whole year preparing for this carnival. As they do and in they Bridgewater. And they have floats which are as big as a house, really? all made of papier-mâché, moving figures, great big figures. Oh. You have no idea. Everybody is in amazing costumes with wings and oh. cloaks and skulls and, <laughs> and they have these um, models of people. So you've got like giants oh, right. walking around about 15, 20 feet high. Magic. They're yeah. so he all made of papier-mâché. How they carry them, I don't know. So you've got lots of videos of this. I've got lots of videos. Oh, I'm hoping goodness. we're going to do a little show because it's That'd worth be it's worth yes, seeing. It would be. The amazing part about it is that as soon as the carnival is over, mm. do you know what they do with all this stuff? No. They bin it. They really? break it up. All yeah. this a year's work. And, and they destroy just destroy it. it. And fortunately, I, I'll bring it along next oh, week. Right. I, I took a piece off the scrap heap. Uh -huh. And absolutely, it's a face. Oh, right. And yes. it's made of papier mache. The amount of work that's gone into just is that astounding. little piece is astounding. Yet yeah. there was, it's only as minute, like a pinhead compared with a right. skyscraper of the coal carnival. Right. And all that work just gone like that. Perhaps that explains the Mediterranean economic situation as we sit here. Well, it you know, they're do. not it making best do. use of what it they got, perhaps. Do. All that work and then to th yeah. throw it away. Yeah. Anyway, that's what right, you've just right. been doing, but let's get back to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, so we, we um, had, had bought this house for my, one of my daughters. Yes. Nice house, mm. I can't remember, six, seven bedrooms. Right. Standing in Norwich Road. Right. And then there was a doctor and his wife who lived in the house next door. They're very nice big houses with big, uh, huge gardens. What sort of Victorian and Edwardian type Well, they, I would have thought the 20s, perhaps, oh, something right. like oh, that period. Quite, yeah, quite and, recently. And, um, but the doctor and his wife came to me one day and they said, oh, we, we're going to sell. You wouldn't be interested. Oh, right. So I said, yes, and I went and looked at it and I bought it straight away. Right. Because I thought, well, this is lovely. Because yeah. if we have, my wife wasn't happy in Stoke Ferry. Yeah, you were because, saying. Because, you know, the neighbours. And yes. she never, she's never got on with neighbours. <laughs> she was an angel. I mean, yes. I was married, as I've said before, for 65 years. I know. Anyone in no, very with nice me for lady. 65 well, I think, years? I think she was a saint, actually. But yeah, absolutely we, we saint. That. No, no question that. about it. So I thought, well, this would be a good uh, temporary place to get away from the, the, right. where the neighbours are. And um, so we restored the doctor's house and we right. made it a beautiful house. Right. And uh, 
We put in a £30,000 kitchen uh -huh. because I thought, well, she's done all this for me, my good lady. All her life, yeah. And I've got a theory in life that if you want to be happy with your wife, women are a different species altogether. We've got be very and careful on this program. I know, but I'm a, they will approve of the advice I'm oh, just right, going that's to okay, give. Then. My right. advice is if you want to be happy in your marriage, yes. and I can say this from experience of 65 years, you have to court your wife every day of your life. A woman needs to be loved, yes. a woman needs to feel as though she's loved, right. and the only way you can do that, if you go out shopping, just bring her back a bar of chocolate, or a rose, a single flower, anything. But every day there must be something, and every day you must touch her, and every day you must tell her you love her. So there you go. And if you do that, then you will be happy. With, with a half a chance. But today, of yeah. course, I, I go back to the day when marriages were for life. Yes, they were. But now I understand yeah. they last for three and a half years. And well, some, I mean, the, the, the shortest that I know in my, my memory is yeah. three days. And I thought, I thought that was extraordinarily short. Three days? Yes, it was a, an RAF colleague who married an American lady yes. and wasn't really the best of um, relationships. Oh, dear. But, uh, oh, that's sad. But, but sadly, you're right. I mean, I, so in some cases, it's a fashion statement rather than an actual life choice. Well, you know, they all my friends have got married, I must. And they spend this fortune on the wedding. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I know. I mean, I've been a photographer all my life. Mm. And um, I go back to the day when the photographer was incidental. Yes. He sort of tried to get in shots get where he could. And yeah. Nowadays, uh, the photographer ta it. Takes, takes over <laughs> and he runs the thing for an hour or two. Everything's uh, just yeah. still for the, for the photographer. But anyway, this, right. is, this is progress. But anyway, we're straying from the point. Only, only so, slightly. So, so <laughs> there we were. We were getting this uh, done in uh, Felix. So at the same time, of course... I was still doing, um, uh, getting the College of Further Education. They were trying to this do... This was up at King's Lynn. At King's Lynn, yes. because as you recall, I, was, I had this, how shall I say, dream of a small television. Yes. The big, if you're making a film, if you're doing something for the BBC, ITV or Sky, the big people, yeah. they've got to rehearse it, they've got to script it, they've got to auto-cue it. And the cost goes and through the, the roof. And the cost goes through the roof. Yeah. As I've told you before, in mm. the BBC in Norwich, yeah. today they've got 109 full-time people yeah. to produce that half an hour of news every day, yeah. which, I mean, it's colossal. Their costs, I think I've given these figures before, but they're worth mm. repeating, is between £500 and £5,000 per minute mm. of, of viewing time. Mm. We do it, do you know how much for? Well, Bella can tell us. 50p a minute. Yeah. So there's a slight yeah. difference. But I've been preaching this, as you know, I go back a long yes, way I know in you television. Do. Spontaneous <coughs> TV, spontaneous radio. And I, I believe that the future mm. is in active live television. And the proof is, I was saying this way before YouTube came on. Yes. And you look at YouTube now, absolutely s s changed the world. Mm. And of course, the local newspapers. They are dropping by 10% per year. Mm. And I think the future of local news is the local radio, which has coming on by leaps and bounds. Yes. And it's covering the country. And by local television studios, but I think internet I, television yeah. studios. Uh, yeah. To that, that degree, probably. I mean, what seems to be happening is we get quite a lot of startups and then quite a lot of failures. But then that's the, well, the, the order of the beast. No, it? the reason but for the failures... No, the I was looking for, at the, the, the London the one, of the Bristol's... The, 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 the Ofcom, they, they gave 15 licenses that's right, for, they? for television, mm. and 11 of them dropped out. Exactly. Why? Because, quite rightly, these people who took these licenses, they got people from the ITV, BBC, the Sky... The heavy costing in. And yeah. they got the heavy costing in, yeah. and you have no idea... Mm. I mean, I, when I first came here, I had a dear friend, um, he's, he's way off in Barbados at the moment, right. I think, but he was a television cameraman for Sky. Mm. And I brought him over and I went up to the Orwell Hotel yes. and they had a new manager and his wife mm. and we did a, f a nice piece about them. Now, as we came in, I walked into you know the entrance of the Orwell yes. Hotel yes. and there was Terry with the camera and what's it. And the moment we got in, I started talking, cut, cut. And because there was a bit of shadow, yeah. or there wasn't something quite right, yeah. and yeah. what's it? But of course, that cleared my mind. 
but I came back again <laughs> and I started again and after a couple of minutes cut cut yeah, you know yeah. and and your mind goes blank yeah. now yeah. the way I have tried always to do it mm. and I I the proof of the pudding is in the eating because Felix Toe television had over 400 hits last month mm. which is a great credit to Maureen you know who, yes. who manages it yeah. and her team she's got mm. a very loyal team mm. but it's done by this we don't script we don't rehearse you've got to be able to talk yes. now the radio the success of the local radio yes. is because it's much easier you can sit there with your notes nobody can see you no, and, no. And, and and then you switch over to music if yeah. you want to. But there's a lot more flexibility. There's more flexibility. You can do what you want, really. But with television, you've got to be able to keep talking. But yeah. it's nothing very special, you see. It's just as if you're having a conversation yes. with a friend in a pub or in a sitting room. Yeah. And that's what it, We're straying from my life now. You're getting yeah. on, me on my, my no, hobby But it, it's a key point to why we're sat here now. Really. Well, it is. But we'll come it back is. to that. Let's yes. get back into it, Sri. Yes, yes. You're, you're into... Mm. Conversion of the doctor's house, yes. uh, and, and whatever. <coughs> but you, you then also got involved in a, a, a block of fourteen flats, or oh, something. Oh yes, How yes. Did you get into that? Franciscan Court. Um, oh right. People yes. probably know Franciscan Court. It's f uh, four, fourteen stories yes, high, tax office, isn't and it? it's yeah. it's down by the Premier, not the Premier Inn. There's an uh, Novotel. Hotel yes. just there, just uh, by there. Where the tax office used to be. And I can't remember how no. I got involved with it, but no. I, got, I became a director of the company. As you do. And um, <laughs> I got involved with it. And so while I was doing out the doctor's house, yeah. I was trying to, uh, how shall I say, redo, redo and get this thing going. Right. But of course, it had got filled up, unfortunately, over a period of time. Yeah. There was a very nice man who was involved with it. Right. And uh, I became involved with him. And I, I took over the top floor, oh, right. and I converted four flats there into a huge penthouse flat. Oh, did you? Absolutely glorious. Superb you have views. no idea. Yeah. There was glass from the um, ceiling to the floor. Oh, right. Yes. And um, Grand design absolutely, type. from one side you could see the whole of Ipswich. The other side you saw the Orwell Bridge. Yes. And it was absolutely tremendous. But of course, my good lady, of course, after we'd been yes. got it all set up, we did this flat out. It was absolutely a joy. I used to, we used to love going yeah, up I there. Bet, yeah. um, there was, we had a lift right up to the top. Uh -huh. If the lift was broken, you had to go up 14 flights of stairs, which yeah. could be a bit killing. I but and you. keep you fit. But one day we d we drove up at night. This uh -huh. is how uh, we severed our connections with it. Um, and there was only one parking space which I had. Right. And we, we drove up, and of course there was somebody parked in it. Oh dear. So we had a full-time caretaker, obviously. Yes. So I phoned up the full-time caretaker. I said, oh, look, somebody's parked in our parking space. Do you think you could just um, get it? him to move so we can put the car away oh, and come right. in? Uh -huh. And after five minutes down, he came, clutching a hammer. A hammer? A hammer. Right, <laughs> OK. <laughs> he went up to this car, yeah. smashed the window, really? leant in, and steered the car, let the handbrake off, and, and pushed, pushed it out, out of the way so that we could go in. Now, this was done with great love and intent. He was trying to please us. Well, yeah. Out. And my wife Oof. looked at this, and she was, was horrified. I bet she was. Because, you know, one wonders what whether he was using that hammer, yeah. uh, what yeah. was going on in those block of flats under us. We had a yeah. lovely penthouse flat up there, but what was going on underneath? No. At that moment, unfortunately, or a week, few weeks afterwards, the managing director, he died. Oh dear. <coughs> and he was and the I driving had, force. I had he? the opportunity of taking over, buying the whole block. Right. But my wife said no, under no circumstances. <laughs> and you listen this time. <coughs> I always listen to my yes. wife. Yeah, and that, but, but we won't go there. Except when I didn't. Yeah. But, uh, so, so, <laughs> so I didn't get involved with Franciscan Court. Right. But I might add that the young man who did get involved, right. and he bought it, I had a chance to buy it at a very, very competitive price. Mm. Which, uh, uh, but the young man who did get involved and buy it, he spent a lot of money Done a good job. doing it, did a good job. Excellent. And out for nostalgia's sake, I bought one of the flats on oh. the 10th floor. Oh, right. So we've still got a flat and that in view. Franciscan with, with, with the view, yeah. which we let out. But it was oh, only right. pure nostalgia. Right. I felt we should keep our connection no, that's going. No, good. That's with, good. With, with, with. But anyway, 
to cut a long story short, so this was what was occupying. I was doing, still doing a bit of the television with the King's Lynn. Oh, and right. We were restoring the house. I was doing the flat, for converting those four flats right. into a penthouse flat, running this block of flats. So how did so you get into Felixdale then? What, well, no, how my, did, my how daughter, the daughter who lived in the other Norwich house. Oh, right. <coughs> she, excuse me, she came up to me, up to us one day, and she said, I've got a house. I found a house. I've seen a house in Felixstowe, really? which Mum would li love. Oh right! So of course we went to see it, and it had been up for sale for a long time. Had it? And this was a house at the bottom of Brook Lane, which is the bottom of Brook Lane. Uh, I'm getting a bit hoarse. Do you think I just have no, a little ha bit of a little drop yeah. of water? Well, you've got a bit of a cold, haven't you? <coughs> see, it's the multi. It's that travelling in those yeah, sealed that, in that, tin that's tubes what it called is, aircraft. But at any rate, to yeah. cut this long story short, um, uh, she, there was this house, it was at the end of Brook Lane, mm. and it's the house on the corner next to the Floodiers. Yes. Now, interestingly enough, um, the same sort of circumstance had happened both in that house mm. and at the Floodiers. Now, it's strange how, I think, I'll say there's an overall plan for everything. <laughs> it's very strange coincidences. Now, the people, the family who had bought this house, Brookend House, Yes. The man had bought it with his wife, mm. and then unfortunately he died. And the family had lived there for 10 years, oh, you right. know, I suppose, and it, had, and it, had, it, so it needed, a, it needed a lot no. of attention. In right. the flood years, strangely enough, yes. there was Donna, a lovely lady, yes, she, she, was. Was, she was the last landlady of the flood years. Yes. And her husband had done exactly the same thing. They bought the flood years, All the and he bought it without telling her. So yeah. it was, it was, it was <laughs> a bit little, of a shock. Bit of a shock. Yeah. But he, once he'd bought it, he died too, and she was left there running it for ten years. Yeah. So strange, it should it be. It is strange, thing. isn't it? But it's yeah. a lovely position mm. because um, I had a, a local, one of the leading, I might add, architects. Uh, uh, no, oh. um, estate agents. Oh, I yes. had it surveyed. Richard Bannister is a yes. wonderful surveyor, wonderful man altogether, yeah. very musical. He used he to have is. a beat group in those days. Yeah, we've been trying to get him and to do a he, program. When he it. went round and surveyed it for me, he said, well, this is the best view in Felixstowe. Yes. And of course, the reason for it is, is because it's on the curve of the coast yes. and it's facing south. Mm. So although we're on the east coast, we're facing south, so we have the sun all day long. Yes, you do. But for some reason or another, I don't know why, they hadn't taken advantage of that wonderful vista, in, in the wonderful design. view, and the windows were, you know, just... But I, I, I have got a philosophy with any new property. Mm. You've got to move in if it's for yourself. Number yes. one, the bells have got to ring. Never buy a prop house or marry a woman unless the bells ring. Well, there's no, <laughs> no answer to that. No answer to that. They're one. not. Say but, anything. But, Crack on. But... Um, so, so the bells rang for me with that, and but I moved in, <coughs> and then we found, you know, there was a lot to do. We put yeah. a lift in, right. and I got this architect who came in, a wonderful man, Aaron Moss. Mm -hmm. um, he used to work for the Baber Council. Oh, yes. And one of my sons was a director of the Baber mm. Council, Christopher. But he came in, and he designed some wonderful sunrooms upstairs, we built a big extension on the front, oh, right. the veranda, and so right. that we could take advantage of this lovely view. And at the same downstairs, so we had windows all the way round, right. and it was a joy. My wife loved it. Great. And I'm pleased to say that you know, for the last year of her life, she she, she got really did enjoy yes. that. Yes. Good. Excellent. So, so that was how we came to Felixstowe. But once again, as I say. When we first came, it just shows you how there's a plan in everything. Mm. The, the College of Further Education in Kings Lynn, they of course were starting on some of my television ideas. So I said, well, why not don't we hire a coach and bring 20 of them over to Felixstowe so right. they can work in Felixstowe and do some filming in Felixstowe. You're already in Brooklyn then? We were yeah. in Brooklyn then. Okay. <coughs> so I, <coughs> me, I went next door to Donna. Yes and made arrangements with her in the flood years. Right. And the room, which is now the restaurant, used to... Uh, yes, I know. Yeah, um, I remember that. We, she, she said, well, you can make use of that. So these 22 students used to come over in the coach. Brilliant. They um, uh, went into this room, and then they'd go all over Felixstowe, um, filming and making films and oh, doing right. things. And so there's an awful lot 
Felixstowe has had its part in the beginning of the uh, springboard television, which is the Kings Lynn uh, television right. station. So really, if any of our viewers <laughs> want to have a look at um, Felixstowe and what was happening in 09, 10, 11, well, we'd have to it, go could on, it, it could be, be on our, It could be on our archives. Yeah, they it could be on our archives. One, one of the students did a magnificent one on the parish church. Oh, Another right. one did a beautiful one on the gardens. Um, what, before they were uh, before, before. put into renovation? <laughs> Oh, um, so we could have a before and after. If you he's done could, one, you could, could we? That would be you, interesting. You, you could, you could indeed. Right. But that—that that was the how shall I say how we came to Felixstowe, and I must say, as I when we moved in, I went down onto the beachfront, and there was an old man walking along there, staggering along there, <laughs> and I said, "Oh, do you come from?" He said, "I've been here for thirty years." Oh, right. And I said, "Isn't it a magnificent view? Isn't it lovely?" He said, "I." came here the first day I came 30 years ago. I've been every day, and he said, I still think it's the most wonderful place in the world. And I thought, well, what better recommendation no, you could you it. have than no, to come to Felixstowe no. like that? So that, that, that's brilliant. Now, we've got to the point that you've come into Felixstowe, and you've been doing your house conversions, and I think our final episode will be how then did you get into Felixstowe TV, yeah. this, and yeah. equally Felixstowe Radio, which was yeah. slightly later, wasn't it? Well, so a, a, as you... Uh, and where it's going into the future. Absolutely. Well, let, let, let's start but off with that next time. I think we will. So, viewer, thank you very much for dropping in to see us today. Look forward to seeing you the next time, and... Uh, Thank you very much. Young Eric. Yes. Uh, yeah, young Mike. Heading towards 90. Uh, in, in my 90th, 90th year. year. <laughs> Thank you for viewing. Bye-bye.